When you read a passage such as in Matthew 18, where he speaks about take, tearing out your eye or your hand or anything, cutting off any part of your body that will cause you to stumble. For some people, it's kind of puzzling. Does he really, really, really mean for you to do so? Well, the answer is yes. And there is an asterisk too. Before we get there, matter of fact, let's go to the passage. Matthew chapter 18, verse 8. He says, if your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it from you. It is better for you to enter life that is heaven crippled or lame than to have two hands or two feet and be cast into eternal fire. Now, he's speaking kind of with, with a figure of speech, but there's also some literal um, warnings there as well. Is it possible that possibly your hands or some part of your body could cause you to sin? Well, let's back up a little bit and let's see what he's speaking of. Now, remember, before we get to verse 7, he's speaking about causing children to stumble. He says, whoever... Uh, then humbles himself as his child. He is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But, and here it is, whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for him to have a heavy millstone hung around his neck and to be drowned into the depths of the sea. So what you don't want to be is you don't want to be the cause in this case, of a child stumbling, and you don't want to be the cause of anyone else stumbling. Let's continue because he makes a very important point that I think we need to also include verse seven here. He says, woe to the world because of its stumbling blocks. So there's a bunch of stumbling blocks, there's a lot of devices, there's a lot of things in the world that causes people to stumble. This is important for it is inevitable that stumbling blocks come, but woe to that man through whom the stumbling block comes. That's what he says. These, th these things, these devices that happen, woe to the person who is basically introducing these things, who are causing others to stumble through these different vices. It can be, you name it, some sort of addiction, something drug related, something alcohol or money related, something por pornographic, something of, of that sort that's causing other people to stumble. You don't want to be the person that's causing others to stumble or what if it is your doctrine that's causing folks to stumble? There are some people who have introduced uh, dangerous doctrines that seem appealing, uh, that causes other folks to stumble. The whole point is that you don't want to be part of the various stumbling blocks that are in the world that would cause others to stumble. And so if your hand is part of that or is used for that, if your foot is caused for that, cut it out. Uh, matter of fact, he goes on to say verse 9, and if your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out and throw it from you. So is that extreme? Sure. But that's the point. That's the point that Jesus is trying to get across, even an extreme measure such as such as that. If for some reason your eye is literally causing you to stumble, well, then he expects you to. Now, the issue ultimately, though, is not really going to be your eye because what you look at uh, is governed by what? Your heart. And it's what's in your heart it's going to cause you to want to do these things. What's in your heart is going to cause your eyes to look, your hands to act a certain way. What's in your heart may be used for you to become that very stumbling block. As a matter of fact, he brings up in Matthew 5 as well. Let's go there. He says, you have heard it that uh, you should not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks upon a woman with lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If, then he goes on to say, if your right eye makes you stumble, tear it out and throw it away from you, for it is far better for you to lose one of your parts of your body than for your whole body to be thrown in hell. And if your hand makes you stumble, so now he's he's um, speaking of the same thing that he's speaking of back in Matthew 18. This is also brought up in Mark 9. And so the point is, you don't want to be the cause of stumbling either for yourself or for someone else. And so what has to happen is you've got to identify the vices in your life, the things that come your way that will cause you to stumble. And you might even think that they're a big deal. They might be small, but if it's causing you to constantly fall and then even constantly cause someone else, and that's what you want to make sure that you are not the cause of someone else's stumbling block as well as yourself. So whatever it is, it might be your phone. It might be the type of phone. Maybe you don't need a phone with all these capabilities to go to different places on the internet. Maybe you need some sort of tracking devices or some sort of software that prevents you from going certain places. Maybe you need to make sure that you're not listening to certain songs or watching certain movies or TV shows or things like that, or being around certain people. They're causing you to stumble. And then what happens if they're causing you to stumble 
and you're still on this planet, you're going to end up causing someone else to stumble. And then what does he say about that kind of person? And what ends up happening is we find out that person may not be who they think they are. Their heart may not be may not be truly sold out to the Lord. So you want to be careful. Again, does God expect you to eliminate any and everything, even something extreme that is causing not only you to stumble, but others? He absolutely is. Is tearing your eye out or something like that pretty extreme? Sure. But that's the length that God wants a person to go through to make sure that they don't enter into hell, to make sure that they are, one, seeing God living for him. That's the length that God wants to go us to go through to eliminate sin in our lives and causing sin to be in someone else's life, causing them to stumble. Amen.